Our next topic is a refinement on B plus trees to deal with variable length keys. So far in our lectures, we've been using integer keys in our examples, things like 13 and 25. But you can imagine you might want to build B trees on string fields which have variable lengths. So you might have index entries that look like this. What happens to our occupancy invariant for B plus trees when we have variable length keys? You can ask a similar question about data and leaf pages. If we have string data, how do we talk about the occupancy of the leaf level when the uh, different keys are different lengths? Well, we're going to have to redefine this occupancy invariant to deal with this. Order, the way we defined it before, makes little sense with variable length entries. It doesn't make sense to talk about having between D and 2D entries on a page because the entries are of very different sizes. Therefore, different nodes will have different numbers of entries. And index pages, as we'll see, often can hold many more entries than leaf pages. Uh, this is uh, also, by the way, true even with fixed length fields because of alternative 3. Remember, in alternative 3, the leaf level is key, comma, list of matching record IDs. Well, some keys are popular, and they'll have a long list of matching record IDs, and most keys are unpopular, and will have a short list of um, uh, matching keys. And so these list entries at the leaf level are going to be variable length, even if our keys are fixed length. So instead of talking about occupancy in terms of entries, we'll talk about occup occupancy in terms of a physical criterion of bytes. So we're going to say that the B plus tree has to have its pages at least half full of index entries for internal nodes or data entries for leaf nodes. Now, as we said uh, with respect to deletion, many real systems are actually even sloppier than this. They'll allow pages to become less than half full um, and only reclaim space when the page is truly empty. Given that we have variable length entries, a natural question is how can we get more index entries, particularly more keys, onto a page? Uh, after all, the more index entries we have, the more pointers we have, the bigger fan out we have. With the bigger fan out, we might actually have a shorter tree, which will mean fewer IOs to do search. So let's look at an example here. We've got a page. It's an internal page for a B plus tree. And here's a compressed version of those same keys where we're just taking this distinguishing prefix that takes each key and differs it from the key on the left, to its left. So Dan Ha and Daniel Yogurt differentiate on their fourth character. Daniel Yogurt and Davy Jones differentiate on their third character, D-A-V. Davy Jones and David Yu on the fourth character, D-A-V-I. And Diana Murthy differentiates from David Yu on the second character, D-I. So it would seem that this is all we need, these prefixes, to get the differentiation we have in the previous example. And we've made a lot more room now for more keys and pointers. Now, are these truly the same? Think about where David Jones would be located uh, under each of these index entries. In the first case, you'd expect to see David Jones between Davy Jones, which is less than, and David U, which is greater than David Jones, which is the one, two, three, fourth pointer from the left of the page. In the second case, David Jones would appear between DAVI and DI which is the one, two, three, four, fifth pointer on the page. So actually David Jones lands in a different region of the B plus tree in the second case than in the first case. So it's not exactly the same partitioning of all possible keys you might insert. But why do we care? As long as the B plus tree can take our queries and route them to the proper data, we don't really mind if this compression results in a slightly different layout of the tree. What we just care about is that the tree has high fan out and that it's correct. The truth is we don't really have to think about this trade-off because the way we're going to achieve prefix key compression in practice in a B plus tree is during page split at the leaf level. So let's see how this goes. Here's an example of a leaf level page on the right and a new tuple to be entered into that page on the left that's going to cause the page to split. So if we compress starting at the leaf like this, on split we need to determine the minimum splitting prefix and copy it up. So we're going to get Sarah Lee on the left with Sarah Manning and Sarah Zhu, Sarita Adve, and Sarum on the white on the right. And the split key is obviously going to be copied up, is going to be Sarah Zhu. But what we can do here is we can say, what's the minimum distinguishing prefix of Sarah Zhu with respect to the tuples on the right-hand side? It's Sarah Z, because that differentiates us from Sarah Manning over on the left. Now and forever, anything greater than Sarah Z is going to go on the right, which includes things smaller than Sarah Zhu. It would include Sarah Zap, for example. And that's fine. Um, so it's a little bit different than what we get if we copied the whole key up, but it works just fine. And from now on, Sarah Z is the split key up above. 
Here's another compression technique we can do. It's called suffix key compression. So what we saw up to now is prefix key compression. Now this is suffix key compression. Here's our example interior nodes. And you'll notice that they all start with the same few characters. And so what we can do is we can move those characters to a header and store only the suffixes of that header as split keys. So we have SAR as a common header, and then we have these different suffixes that are our split keys. Now during comparisons, we'll reconstruct the full key by pasting the prefix onto the suffix. All right, but this is going to be allow us to um, not store the same SAR prefix over and over. All right, now when might this be especially useful? Well, actually not so much with strings, although it could be useful with strings. It's very useful with composite keys. So here's an example. We have an index actually on three columns. Zip code, comma, last name, comma, first name. Now there's a number of people who live in my zip code, and I don't want to store that zip code for each one of them inside the index. So I can store the zip code once, and then I can have last name, comma, first names, which are probably more likely to be different in my neighborhood, uh, stored as the split keys. So composite keys are a great example where suffix key compression pays off because they're often on columns that don't have that many distinguished values on the first column, but all told have distinguished values on the full set of columns.